Hello, everyone. Uh, so prep time is up. Hope everyone had a nice prep. Um, so we'll be starting with uh, introductions for this round. Um, before we move on to regular introductions, I would just like to know that this is a room which is being streamed. And everyone who is in this room should be people who have consented into streaming in the registration form. However, if there is anyone who would like to um, not be streamed during this round, you can now inform uh, Igrim in the chat if you would like to not be streamed or recorded for this round. Also, given this is a streamed round, we encourage everyone where just possible to use video as this is nicer, of course, in terms of streaming and, and recordings for people to access. Um, a tiny bit of time such that you can indicate if you do not consent into streaming prior to us starting introductions. Cool. Uh, it appears that no one has issues with this, hopefully. Uh, thank you so much for consenting to streaming. This is very nice and, and we appreciate it. In that case, we will be moving ahead with regular introductions for a round. So we'll be starting from the panel and introducing ourselves. As we introduce ourselves, I would like everyone to do a couple of things. Firstly, if you have any gender pronoun preferences, please do state those preferences as you introduce yourself. And secondly, uh, please introduce yourselves personally. Uh, so if uh, you are uh, a team, please do not introduce both yourself and your partner, but let your partner also introduce themselves. This is such that we can check that everyone's mics work and these kind of things. Um, cool. So then starting from the panel, uh, chairing, I am Mila Huskonen. I have no gender pronoun preferences and judging with me are Could we have the other judges introduce themselves to the speakers, please? Uh, Shrey, are you here? Shrey? Uh, I guess we'll be introducing uh, Shrey uh, later. Uh, Igreen, do you know if the other panelist is joining us? Uh, there are no other panelists. I think there are okay. only you and one more judge. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll try to contact Shrey uh, before starting the round. But given uh, Shrey is not here at this time, uh, I would like to uh, ask opening government field B to introduce themselves. Um, Caroline speaking first, she, her, please. Thank you. Uh, and second. Uh, so it's, sorry, we can't hear sorry, you. That's um, my bad. Nice. Matthew speaking second, he, they, please. Thank you so much. Uh, in opening of the session, we have Dred Zeppelin, who is speaking first. Oh, yeah. Um, hi, my name is Suhas, and I'll be speaking first. No preferred gender pronouns. Thanks. Thank you. And second. Hi, my name is Avidal. I will be speaking second. No default preferences. Thank you. And in closing comments, we have a name that I probably can't pronounce well, but we'll try Kazakh Yikarsi or something like this. Who's speaking first? First is Yerkeblan. I'm I have no gender preferences. Thank you. And second? Uh, second speaker is Nortas, no gender preferences. Thank you. Uh, in closing opposition, we have Orbit Without Sugar, who is speaking first. Uh, my name is Matt, and I'm speaking first. No gender preference. Thank you. And second? Uh, the second speaker is Anel, and I am uh, and have no gender preferences. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, so then I'll, I'll try to just get Shrey um, to this Zoom to make sure that uh, they... We'll get, give Shrey... Uh, uh, like one minute, and if Shrey does not appear, then unfortunately we will need to proceed uh, without uh, them. I dream. Um, in case Shrey does not appear, there's a bit of an issue in that I won't be able to time interruptions and the speeches simultaneously. 
Uh, would you be able to time interruptions by any chance in case Ray does not? Uh, yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm back. Okay. Oof, we got scared back. Sorry uh, about that. Um, so in that case, um, like Shrey will be timing interruptions and I will be timing speeches. Uh, I will not be giving timing signals, except if a speaker cuts out for a significant amount of time. In that case, I will show this at, at six minutes and this at seven minutes, because in this case, your timer may not be concordant uh, with uh, or timer. However, in all other cases, please do time yourselves and also time yourself when offering QIs to make sure uh, that we um, that we are um, offering POIs in order. Uh, Shrey, before we proceed, do you have any gender pronoun preferences you would like to state? Nothing, just hear him. OK, thank you. Cool. Uh, in that case, without further ado, I call this house order and call upon the prime minister to start a case of opening government. Here, here. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, my partner and I um, are propping this motion today as we feel as if it gives more power to teachers and schools to give a full education to the children and not worrying about the opinions or the input of parents along the way. We think that this is much better because we think that this motion will bring about change because teachers and schools are the best place to give I'll get, explain why they are the best place to expose children to different ideas and morals and we think that and um, the external influences that come from school are so valuable to children and so valuable to them and their growth that it's <clears throat> without having that it's really really dangerous and when like when you're when a child is only exposed to their family and their close circles that come from a small maybe um close-minded group of people with similar views we think this is particularly dangerous because they don't get exposed to different points of view they they only grow up knowing one thing and think that that is right and they don't get exposed to anything else we think that on our side of the house we have more um sources of information which gives exposure to the different points of views it allows people to debate and consider more points of views and different experiences at least to them becoming more empathetic because they see other other people's struggles they understand different issues happening because they have this exposure that they wouldn't otherwise have um if they were like just living in um their family with no and the family was allowed to constantly like interfere with what the school was teaching them we think that it leads to like a more well-rounded and holistic educational um, experience. Okay, so I'm going to talk about why schools and teachers are the best place to do this. And then I'm going to talk about why less parental interference with a school curriculum and the child's education is a good thing. Okay, and um, just specifically like you, the children go to schools to get like it's it's really really vital because it's something that um it's a unique unique opportunity for um children to access information that they otherwise wouldn't maybe wouldn't have like for example in, in households where the internet might be very limited extremely limited books might be banned that kind of thing they have no other external um sources of information and the only way that they can get this is by going to school and meeting other people from make slightly different backgrounds and by being taught by those teachers who are specifically placed to do so so Basically, and I just like to clear up as well that only small minorities can actually decide where to send their children, like like people who can actually afford to send their children to different schools that might have the same uh, points of views as them, like different kinds of schools, like more maybe slightly more religious schools. I think that for the most part, it's people we're talking about in this debate is people who don't have like the ability to access those different kinds of schools. It's people who are forced to send their children to like whatever local public school is closest to their house. So it might not be um, something that completely lies in like, like falls in, uh, in like it doesn't fall like directly with uh, the views of the parents. Um, so I think that it's it's basically it makes it more difficult for parents to push their like ethos upon the school when this motion is implemented because it stops them from being able to um, uh, stops them from being able to like uh, set up meetings with the um, with the teachers with the school it stops them from being able to um, basically just interfere with things and like push their morals upon the teachers or the, the board and stuff like that and um, we think that um, why teachers are the best place to do it is because they're kind of like teachers for the most part are like go into it for a vocation they're not in it for the money they're not in it for you know um something that is like because for the most part teachers aren't paid enough and they most of the time they're like they're overseen by different um bodies and different educational boards and like different schools they have to fall in line with those kind of um rules and regulations and we think that teachers care because they're not like 
they care about the education of the child. Oftentimes, like in um, less advantaged areas, they would come back and teach those kids because they've gone out and they've realized things like different kind of different points of views and different aspects. Um, and they want to come back to teach the children in their in the neighborhood that they grew up. It's a very vocational thing because they're not paid a lot. So they actually do care. They're not in it for the money. They're in it to educate the children. And that's why we think that it's the most important thing that these teachers have the full uh, remit to do, like to teach what they want to those, to those, um, not specifically what they want, but like because they they might be more travelled or they might be more um, exposed to different ideas as to, opposed to the family. They understand the importance of having this well-rounded education, and I think that the schools as well, because those checks and balances and system, those ombudsmen for education and ombudsmen for children, and there's also like boards of education and ministers and stuff. Um, this, this causes this causes um, the schools to have to fall in line with these regulations and stuff. So we think that the overall the education system does ultimately care about the well-roundedness of the children. And like the oftentimes the like when this doesn't happen is because of the interference of the of the parents, maybe calling meetings or calling for petitions to be signed about not teaching uh, science to children, not teaching sexual education to children, that kind of thing. So now I'm going to just talk about um, why less parental interference is good. So parents most of the time like with the parents we're talking about in this debate are the ones who want to keep children in line with their own morals and the and, and in line with their own um beliefs and like say for example they ban them from like um accessing different information and parents often don't like say for example if they come from a very strict um religious background it kind of it could be something that they don't allow them to have like any access to sex education and stuff like that or um which is really really dangerous like many parents don't want children to learn about safe sex and like consent and stuff like that it might go against their um religious beliefs and like this is not good like this is this is really really dangerous for those children who might like not be exposed to those views um so we get basically we get better sex education through schools because like and then because they're taught those things because they might not have access otherwise like the only other access would be like going online and like finding um resources but like they probably wouldn't be that comprehensive or that like aimed at children it might be stuff that's too explicit like they might just come across a porn site instead of actually getting a full comprehensive um educational experience about what that is and what that means and this specifically helps those children who wouldn't have access to that information otherwise and um, i'll take that poi yeah can you tell us can you tell us at a point at which uh, you agree to the fact that it is done in local schools why will the teachers ever have different ideologies and mindsets from the people living around in that locality especially when it's in a local school thank you we think that they will have ultimately have different points of views as i said they might have like gone away and gotten trained to be a teacher and come back or they've just been they've been like they've traveled more or they might have just um they might have just been influenced in different ways like they've grown up in maybe they've grown up in a similar background but not the exact same we think that like ultimately they have been educated they have gone through education so they need to have been exposed in some kind of a way and there's also because of this the way that the um the education system works is that there's loads of checks and balances in place so that the um the school boards like the, the governments and stuff they will make sure that there's teachers i'd say have like comprehensive understanding of like the ways in which the things work and like they have read books and stuff like that so we think that ultimately there's better educational um opportunities on our side we think that schools are a place where children can access at least some form of information that is external to the parental teachings we think that this is this is much better than just being exposed to the parents views we think that it's different to the stuff that they hear from parents or in their online media circles um if they ever have access to that in the first place ultimately we think that the teachers do have um, more access to different points of views because of like the way that oh yeah okay so i'm up um thank you very much for listening i think the prime minister for a speech and just so everyone's aware uh, at 7 15 or so when judges stop taking notes i will be doing this just so you're aware in case uh, sometimes that might be hard to miss um, for, for speakers. By the way, uh, if people can handle keeping their video on during speeches, this is also fine and, and I think often nice to kind of have a more human experience, but of course, if anyone's connection can take it, uh, no worries. And I call upon the leader of opposition to start a case for the side opposition here. Yeah. Um, hi, uh, I'm sort of here, right? Sorry, what? Uh, uh, so, so am I clear? Am I like more yeah, audible? Yeah, sure. Yeah, can you? Right, right. Um, I don't think I can like use video because I'm using data. There's, there's been like a. Oh, yeah. Okay, no like worries. That. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, give me like 15 seconds. I'll just set up my timer and I'll start. Cool.
uh, may I start my speech? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, cool. Um, I will be starting in three, two, one, go. Speaker, the point at which side opening government sets up this debate about local schools and not schools in general, we think that they are losing this debate already. Why? Firstly, we think that local schools, as we said in the POI, are not that likely to change their views on things in general, right? Which means that, note that when they talk about local schools, they're talking about things like local state parish schools within states like Texas, so on and so forth. The sort of people that teach in these schools are more or less often the same people who form pillars of your local community. These are people who champion the same views that your local, that your local community has championed. And they don't give us a sort of mechanism as to the way these teachers' minds would be changed in the first place, right? Which means that if they say that these, these people have probably gone places and uh, that sort of thing, we don't think that that, that, is, uh, that, that that is that viable. We need a better mechanism, right? So they don't prove why the sort of the, the sort of views in the local schools will be different. We set up this debate about all schools in general, right? So the second thing that they tell us is that your teachers care, right? That these teachers are not in it for money. Firstly, that is just false, right? Teachers obviously are in it for the money. Teachers need the sort of pay that they can get in terms of that, right? In status quo, state schools severely do not pay these teachers well, which is why we think that they are not the best mechanisms for change, as I will get to later. But even if we were to deal with their best case about, and like, and like to some extent, even if we were to buy that these sort of teachers are going to be these sort of great, great, great altruistic people who who really want kids to benefit, we will prove to you why their hands are tied. Lastly, they say that, you know, these, these like, a, like a lot of these kids' parents are now going to push various stringent religious beliefs and not let their kids learn about sex ed, right? Firstly, they don't prove to you why the way they are going to get changed, given that they set up this debate about local schools. But secondly, we are going to prove to you the way in which parents want to, to some extent, come to a, come, come to a large middle ground, right? Like, which means that this debate is not about extremists on both sides of this house, right? This debate is about more or less moderate parents who want to make a trade-off between what they stand for and what they want and, uh, and the sort of level to which they want their kids to succeed. To that end, two things in my speech. Firstly, why teachers cannot mechanize the change that that side OG is talking about. Secondly, why we think parents are the better forms to get this sort of change. Lastly, the necessary, the necessary caveats within this debate. Firstly, why teachers cannot mechanize change. And we think it is quite important to note in status quo that the, that the sort of broad majority of cases that we're talking about are state-funded schools. In state-funded schools, teachers are severely underpaid. They do not have the sort of money that they need in the first place, which means, and, and secondly, they are forced to work long hours without a lot of pay, right? Which means that, in, like, which means that within status quo, they are on the threads end. But let us deal with side OG's best case about the way teachers are great, are to some extent great altruistic agents that want change. Two things here. Firstly, a lot of these state teachers are part of necessary teachers unions, right? And we think this is true because like, for example, within the state, like, like for example, within US, more than 55 to 60% of state of, of, uh, of like state school teachers are part of unions. So what happens here is that firstly, there are these there are these sort of rules that a lot of teachers need to follow within the unions to be able to try and benefit from the sort of bond that they form within these unions, right? Which means that in status quo, schools within the US and various teachers unions within the US cut funding to teachers, the point at which they, for example, take, take, like, like take certain stances within, say, for example, a certain political debate that is going on in status quo because it is seen as too polarizing, right? Which means that in status quo, these these sort of teachers hands are tied in the first place but secondly these unions and a and a large number of these uh, uh, of these school teacher unions are funded by the majority in the us a lot of these unions are funded by the white people are funded by by to a large extent right wing business interests right which means the point at which 
teachers want to like make a change teachers want to fight this sort of system that they have to a large extent coercively coercively co-opted into they simply cannot because it gives them leeway to cut funding for the teachers and and we think that it is at this point that these teachers do not want to risk it they are not going to get changed secondly the secondly the necessary school like the school administration ties these teachers hands right which means that like which means that even if i am a great teacher who wants to like probably make kids play more during school hours and i want to build a school playground the school administration that is more or less profit incentivized is going to tie my hands behind my back and not let me get that sort of change which means that even if we were to buy opening government's characterization that teachers are great are are great altruistic beings that want to effect change that's not going to happen why are why are parents better off firstly we say that these kids parents know these kids needs better than teachers ever will right in status quo given our characterization of the way teachers state teachers are significantly not paid well so on and so forth they are less likely going to like try and try and like take care of each and every student within their class trying to make sure what each of their needs are right which means that in status quo there is not going to be school equity in the first place the way the way which we think parents are going to be significantly different is because these parents know these kids needs right which means that if a parent has a significantly disabled kid this parent can probably advocate for for say school policy like probably setting up ramps within the school so on and so forth we think teachers won't do this simply because they are at their threads end but secondly in terms of leverage right given that the way in which parents work in terms of schools it is a large feedback mechanism which means that if i am a parent and i want to put my kid in a school i am going to significantly rely on feedback given to me by various other parents which means that we think that mobilization is better off the point at which a school's bad reputation spreads through the spreads through through the sort of word of mouth we think that it is going to become far worse for the school in terms of their own pr and we think that it is going to be worse in terms of them not being able to get more students in the future right for example we have seen this within the chicago public school systems where the sort of kids parents got together and spoke up against the system and we saw the school shut down right we think that those those sort of changes can be mechanized what are the long spread impacts aside opening government's policy right one you one this leads to significant alien this leads to alienation of these sort of minorities given that in status quo for example black people are seen and they and they think themselves to be increasingly cut off from the system and they simply cannot voice out their concerns because they do not have significant democratic representation we think that this is the only mechanism through which they can provide change right which means that if they see the school syllabus as racist they are less likely to put their kids in school in the first place lastly what are the caveats in this debate if opening government wants to argue necessary child like people like not being against sex education and that sort of thing that's going to happen anyway right and we think that more or less parents want the want what's best for their kids they are willing to make a trade off the necessary comparative in this debate is where you get parents a better say and where you have various minorities yeah uh we're proud to oppose thank you i thank the leader for position for that speech and remind everyone about a couple of things firstly please make sure to always mute yourselves during our speeches to make sure that we don't get any noise and our speakers will do the same during your speech um except for prs of course and secondly please do make sure to time yourself because as per the wills uh rules of judging we cannot take any notes on or take into account any material that comes after 7:15 So at the point where I'm I'm raising my hands that means we're not allowed to take notes as a judge just so you're aware um so it is in your benefit to make sure to time your speech accordingly as well. Thank you so much and I call upon the deputy prime minister to continue the case of opening government here here. Okay I'm I'm used now. Okay. 3 2 1 Ladies and gentlemen, open and government have quite a few problems with the points and rebuttal given to us by the leader of the opposition. I'm going to start off by saying that they simply assert the fact that teachers are only in this for the money. Both opening government and opening opposition tell you that teachers are not paid a lot of money. We um stand by the fact that teachers don't receive a lot of money. We think that it's universally agreed that teachers are very poorly paid. We think that there are other jobs that have involve less emotional investment and there are jobs that consume less time through grading papers and stuff like that and setting homework assignments that people could do and receive a similar grade of pay. We think what sets teachers apart is that when you are a teacher and you are actively involved with these children you are more likely to for- garner an emotional connection with them and you are more likely to be invested in their well-being and in their learning and in their home life we think that teachers actively care about these students for two reasons 
One, due to the fact that it is a job that requires a lot of effort in relation to the pay and that there are other jobs you could get if you were focused just on money, we think that people who become teachers are predisposed to care about children's education. Uh, two, we also think that simply by virtue of being a teacher, you are more likely to be invested in a child's education due to constantly being exposed to them and through seeing them, through seeing them mature and through seeing them progress through adolescence and become young people. We think that these are two clear reasons why teachers have a direct interest in ensuring that children receive good education and ensuring that children um, have good qualities of life, right? We also think the kind of like um, assertion given to us by the leader of the opposition about how this will benefit people who are students who are severely disabled and students of color and minorities like that kind of falls at the debate. Why? Well, first of all, we think that students who are have a severe disability and require teaching assistance or they require ramps and stuff like that, we think that there are like lawsuits and legal precedents in place so that schools are forced to put in ramps and that schools are forced to apply special needs assistance and that schools are forced to make their education accessible due to the fact that there's a lot of legal precedent and the last thing that a school wants to do is deal with a lawsuit, right? We think also the fact that teachers are invested. So we think that there are a number of reasons external to this debate why schools are more likely are likely to make educational accessible to these people and why these people aren't going to be worse off under this side of the debate. We also think in terms of the example given to us of the schools in Chicago and schools um, full of people of color, specifically black people, we think that the main reason these people are disenfranchised is because they are from such low socioeconomic backgrounds. We think that the parents of these teachers don't simply have the time to lobby the school and stuff like that. We think that the parents of these teachers, uh, the parents of these students are oftentimes working lots of jobs and trying to make money to raise for the, their children as best as they can. So we think that even if this debate were not to be put in, and we think that regardless of this debate, we think that these parents are going to be disenfranchised and we do not see any reason why they are more likely to be franchised on opposition side of the house or why on that side of the house they have more time to actively engage in their children's education. Some clarification on my partner's points. We think that Caroline brought up local schools as an example. We think that that example was brought up by Caroline due to the fact that these people were affected by these issues and want to go back retroactively and make a change, right? It's kind of asserted by side opposition that these teachers are more like, are, since they come from these communities and they come from these kind of like cultural institutions, they're more likely to hammer home the cultural norm. First off, we think it's quite clear that curriculums in schools are set by the larger government than they are by individual teachers. That's an assertion which is incorrect. We think that larger governments, um, such as like the Department of Education in specific countries, set these educational curriculums and then they are just taught out by the teachers, right? So we think that the effects that this motion have are kind of minute and they're more about how the individual students relate to the material being taught to them by the teachers as a result of their parents. We think that this takes ver two very specific forms. It takes place in parents who are of a specific like cultural or conservative background going against either the history or the English literature that's taught and going against the science, right? We think that schools traditionally have banned books due to the fact that parents have complained about them. If you go back and you look at any of the books that were banned from school libraries in multiple countries, it is due to the fact that there were a large number of parental complaints. Looking back at this retroactively, it's universally agreed that banning these books was bad. And these books are often great pieces of literature like Catcher in the Rye of Mice and Men or To Kill a Mockingbird. Birds that teach people about race, books that teach people about race, books that teach people about class, and books that were directly banned because parents were interfering in the educational system and making and implying that they didn't like their children learning about these things because these conservative parents were directly impacting and causing a worse education for all the students involved, right? Um, so we think that um, due to the fact that the government at large is setting these books and it's not within these small communities, the government at large oftentimes is more um, progressive due to the fact that it comes from like a metropolitan area specifically. We think that these government is more is like less likely to be as conservative and it's less likely to put specifically racist and specifically books in the curriculum. And we think that it's directly the parents being involved that are going to lobby for this stuff to be removed from the curriculum. Um, on to my next point, right? We also um, stand by the point of like relationship and sexual education. We think that this is a really big point, right? Because oftentimes we think that the it's universally um, known for like schools to teach like some degree of like social and civic responsibility and for them to teach children about like sexual health and sexual well-being. We think that this looks like schools teaching people about consent. It looks like schools teaching people about contraception. And we think that by knowing these things, students are directly better off in their life because due to the fact that they are aware of active consent, they're more likely to seek it from partners. They're less likely to hurt other individuals. 
Um, we also think that people are more likely to be empowered due to the fact that they now know that they have been assaulted and they're more likely to come forward. We think that there are a lot of benefits to this. We also think that due to them knowing about contraception, that they're more likely to use it and there's less likely to be teenage pregnancies, which has a benefit for these children due to the fact that they're not being born. Um, I'll take POI from OO. I just missed it there. Yeah. Can you please provide us with a check mechanism to ensure that teachers don't go overboard in promoting their own biases and propaganda on your side of the house and as an extension of that, even the schools as a whole? Um, okay, well, we think that schools as a whole, in terms of like curriculum, we think that there are a series of checks and balances that Caroline said it. We think that there are educational ombudsmen. We think that there are Department of Education. There's lots of checks for curriculum that it has to go through before it gets to the final space. Um, we think that it's not unreasonable. Um, like we think, first of all, bias happens all the time on both sides of the house to a certain extent. Um, we think if there's serious complaints about teachers being actively racist and stuff like that towards children, there's always going to be checks in place like that. And that's kind of like a squirrel of emotion. We also think specifically um, that if teachers are biased, right, we're looking at, like, at this like in two ways. So we think it's better that students receive some form of um, like opposing worldview. We think that if parents are liberal and they're like not conservative, then they're going to receive this kind of education at home. Um, which means that they can balance out and these students can get opposing worldviews and think about it. But we think that if these parents are conservative and they're receiving conservative education in school and stuff like that, it's negatively bad because there's not conflicting worldviews. We think teachers, due to the fact that in, in most countries they have to go to college and in most countries that they have to be highly educated, they're more likely to be um, like educated and less likely to be conservative and biased like that. Thank you for listening. Thank the Deputy Prime Minister for that speech and call upon the Deputy Leader of Opposition to conclude the first half of this debate. Here, here. Am I audible? Just give me a minute. Three, two, one. Panel, notice the way that they come up and tell you that teachers are more likely to be emotionally invested with the kids and more likely to be more likely to be uh, emotionally involved with the kids, which and and don't go ahead for that. We tell you that is exactly the more reason because notice the way that that characterization is that the teachers want to teach them what they believe is right, what they believe is right for the children, which means they're significantly more likely to go ahead and impose their own beliefs and moral rights without constraints if we if we do not allow parents to go ahead. Right? Notice the way that and and and, and they're more likely to go ahead and superimpose their own beliefs on the children because they believe that is what is good beneficial for society because that because they believe that is what children should behave and that is something that we have a problem with right one notice the way that we've already told you about why teachers try to notice the way that we've already told you about why why in, in status quo why in status quo teachers aren't teachers aren't as effective because of your unions and administrations and notice the way that they aren't solving that on their side of the house which is why they aren't able to get rid of them Problem, right. Second, notice the way that the motion clearly talks about that at a point in which at a point in which you give teachers full autonomy as opposed to what is opposed to in status quo where parents have some amount of say in the form of probably protesting if they believe something isn't right in the cu curriculum or what is being taught. Notice the way that the motion talks about a wider aspect of things which they don't characterize about what these things look like. Like uh, like say what what the teacher decides to teach, how she decides to teach, what school trips are going to look like. What type of curriculum? What type of curriculum exists in the system? Exists up to a certain extent within the school. Also about what they choose to teach and how they choose to teach it, and that is what is given in the in the in the motion, which is why we believe it is fair for us to discuss it in the motion. Right now, what happens in the case? What happens in their side of the house is that given the fact that we live in a majoritarian society, at least there are some amount of protective clauses when parents choose to protest and when parents choose to protest about why certain parts of the syllabus which they believe are inappropriate or certain ways in which teachers teach which they believe are inappropriate and certain ideologies which they believe are inappropriate they're able to protest about it and prevent it from actually happening right notice the way that it's not anti-science biases that are ever going to make it it is about actively racial text or problematic text that exists 
text within these uh, textbooks or probably certain teachers to going ahead and teaching certain problematic things about so uh, white elitism and so on and ingraining these biases amongst these children and we believe that if we allow them to go enable notice the way that on their side of the house there is no check mechanism to prevent this active this passive discrimination from ever happening to these kids where these uh, where these teachers uh, modify a part of the curriculum to make it seem like where the teachers modify parts of the curriculum to make it seem like they are the ones in um, to make it seem like they are the ones in uh, to me uh, these uh, organization bodies that we've told you about the student organization when they have autonomy no reason to not enforce their biases and they uh, and they will continue to do so without a check mechanism at a which at a point at which parents can't come and call this out right which is why the entire point of which is why the which is why the entire point of how how you know were they exposed to a wider world view is inherently for because they are more likely to be exposed to the majority in view at a point which you gives the school a significantly larger stake as opposed to what happens in status quo right which means to say that which means to say that at a point which these unions exist which are extremely powerful which my which my first speaker came and told you about notice the way that a single teacher in their case out of goodwill cannot fold to this right even, and even if they do um, what is more likely to happen is that is that uh, notice the way that they do not contest my uh, my first speaker's characterization of how and in texas and in chicago a large number of times the most influential people are the Ones who end up becoming teachers because they want to. At a times, teachers do want to propagate their ideologies. They want to teach what's best for them, right? Which comes from their their side of the house as well, and which they agree. Which means to say that they're more likely to try to propagate the ideologies to these children, which is something that we've come up and told you is extremely problematic. At a point at which it goes unchecked, at a point at which parents cannot call it out, at a point parents can't come and say, "Hey, maybe this is wrong," right? Notice the way that on a comparative, we tell you even if in certain schools where it is not more likely to happen, where parents are not. notice the way that they never tell you why parents are going to get enough traction to get sex education banned but even if they, even if they even if they do somehow manage to prove that we believe what is the more significant harm is disenfranchising minorities because of the way that a large number of these teachers that come in are going to be from the majority and because of the fact that the teachers get to say in the curriculum get to say on every single thing that that goes on in the school with regard to which school trips they're going to how 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 the how counselors are going to function what books are available in the library and notice the way that if parents don't get to say in this it is mostly going to be stuff that reinforces majority and stereotypes reinforces that and there will be no check balance on their side of the house even if this does not happen even if this does not happen there are still certain even if this does not happen there still needs to be certain, uh, 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 we believe that we believe that even if this does not happen we believe that the minorities deserve a right we believe that the minorities deserve a right to have a stake in the education system especially when it is controlled before i go on closing assuming that we still have some parental interaction with teachers and still have the uh, discrim discriminative teachers on our side what's the change on discrimination level on both sides because on our side the teachers will still find a way to discriminate disenfranchised minorities or children can uh, talk to their parents that they're being discriminated and have the balance system that you talk about so the fundamental problem and the reason that that argument is not mutually exclusive is the fact that at the point at which a school is given full autonomy about what goes on in the school they they are more likely to be able to enforce the biases of most of the people in that school right notice the way that this is concurrent with what opening government tells you which is why you're going to have to defend it about it being local schools reinforcing local biases right but what what happens on our side of the house is that parents can rally and lobby that certain things are inappropriate and aren't taught in a certain way which means to say that they're more likely to get traction they're more likely to they're more likely to call out the school for their bullshit and get changes in the curriculum which doesn't happen on your side of the house because the parents do not have a say in the system right notice the way lastly lastly we tell you why it is a fundamental harm that, that they cannot ignore and why it is most was largely more significant harm than in their case where they come up and tell you sex education won't be taught which we believe is inherently fraudulent because majority of parents won't back it and even if they do it takes place in catholic it mostly takes places in areas where where schools are where schools are where teachers are taught with the same reinforced biases which means to say that it is not which means to say that they haven't proved to you why that is not mutually exclusive what is the most significant harm is getting these what is the most significant harm is clamping down on these people from minorities internalizing the oppression against them and legitimate legitimizing that they are not good enough or whitewashing their opinions and views on certain things notice the way that every single thing, interaction that takes place in a child's life from the age of 12 to the time when he becomes an adult is also going to largely reinforce the way he lives and the way he thinks and the kind of stuff he does right which is why we believe that at a point in which you're going to reinforce the bias either they're going to feel that they aren't good enough or they're not they're going to lose faith in the system and drop out which is significantly more harmful on 
their side of the house and these biases legitimize the discrimination against them which makes them significantly worse off and the emotional trauma they are never able to re recover from this which is why we are exceptionally proud to I think we'll deputy leader for position for that speech and call upon member of government to extend them side comment here here. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, there's some noise in the background, but yes, can. Thank you for the speech. Problem of uh, or problem of opening up about about discrimination. We have uh, we have a we have an answer for this in 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 the world of uh, government. We have meetings uh, meetings which initiated by parents. So in case of discriminations, uh, children can complain for the for their parents and uh, tell them about discrimination in the schools, about their, uh, their teachers, and parents can complain to the directors of these schools and they can initiate meetings and solve the problem. So we don't think that it's a unique problem of, of this uh, motion. The, in the, the second answer that if uh, children has children have personal problems with teachers or personal problems with education, they also can ask uh, their parents to uh, initiate uh, uh, initiate some uh, initiate some meetings, which can uh, solve their problems. Or parents also cooperate uh, with each, with with each other and solve uh, problems if their children. Uh, children want. So we have, we have the. We have, uh, what about our, our argument? Uh, so they. Uh, uh, they. What about our argumentation? Our argumentation is about teachers more teachers' responsibility in the case of government. So several uh, several claims. Uh, first of all, there is there was a opportunity of parents. Uh, to form the t children's values, children's behavior before the 12 years, so it uh, it uh, do not break the break the uh, parents' right for their children, and also before the 12 years, parents can choose their school, can uh, can choose their uh, teachers, can choose their curriculum. Also, uh, it's not problem of this motion the second uh, the uh, the central uh, thing of this in the status quo teachers complain to parents by initiation initiation meetings uh, initiation meetings to their children the children's are uh, not children the teachers want to solve problems of children with their parents and tell them more information about their children after this two problems first problem teachers do not want more responsibilities for uh, for uh, children's problem because they are they are controlled by parents sometimes uh, some parents make donations to schools and schools school programs are influenced influenced by uh, by parents and change it the change it by uh, by parents the this is the first problem that teachers don't want uh, more responsibilities for for the children's problem. The second problem is that some children do not want to share uh, with their problem with their parents because they do not because parents do not understand uh, children's problem. So, uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, parents cannot. Uh, understand about academic results uh, about private life so so it's uh, good that uh, that uh, children will have uh, some uh, private uh, private life with their uh, with their teachers with with their school 
the problem uh, the in the first problem not ever the in the first problem where teachers uh, uh, where teachers do not uh, want more responsibilities for the problems and complain to the parents not every parents can help for the for their children uh, for their children take time for the problems of children uh, two reasons first reason uh, some of them uh, works a uh, whole day and uh, some of them works uh, works and they are busy whole day the second problem some parents are low educated parents and uh, for example uh, from minorities and they are not understand the value uh, the value of education and also cannot help also cannot solve the problems of children so uh, how can solve this pro uh, how can we solve this problem after that after that motion the teachers can get more power and more responsibility because they cannot complain to the parents with problem with children problems and to ask solve them in our case teachers have to uh, solve the children's problem themselves and they uh, they are Mm, their behavior, their behaviors are changed by this motion, and they uh, and school school activities uh, change it. School curriculum uh, will be changed. They will be more disciplined, uh, more disciplined uh, in school. The second problem, the second problem is about children's uh, private uh, private life, where uh, where where teachers uh, tell. Uh, tell share or tell or share with uh, children's problem with their parents. I think it also solves the problem of children because uh, in the status quo, children have not a private life. If if they have any academic uh, problems with any academic results, teachers uh, complain to their parents to tell them, and uh, the children uh, children feel more pressure from their parents also they cannot uh, do uh, do that things uh, do, do uh, things that they want in the in our case in our in our case in our world children can can uh, can lose uh, the, uh, can lose some academic results but they do uh, things what they want thank you I thank the member of comment for that speech and call upon the member for petition to extend on the side of petition. Hear, hear. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, about to the government, uh, they said that parents uh, don't understand their, child, their children's problem. But in case of proposition, it will be even harder to understand because uh, now uh, teachers don't uh, initiate uh, any meetings and they can't uh, to make some meeting, for example, and to, uh, to talk about uh, their children, their, to talk about children's problems and so on. And uh, parents will be less about uh, their children's school life, uh, even less uh, in the world of proposition. Uh, but in our world, it will be easier for them to know about their children's problem in school. And it will be harder for them to understand it from, uh, from teachers. Uh, also, they said that not all parents to help their children because they don't have uh, time but teachers have even less time because they have a lot of students uh, they have a lot of children and uh, they can uh, it is hard for them to uh, solve some problems individually individually uh, because all uh, teenagers uh, most likely think that 
uh, their problem is unique and uh, they have they there are no uh, people with the same problems and they require the individual uh, solving of problems and uh, but uh, for teachers it is hard to uh, and so uh, to find the time for all all their students but uh, for parents it will be easier so uh, our case uh, we believe that if we will not allow parents to determine to determine uh, their children's educa educational activity children from minority will suffer why because for example if religious people don't want their children their child to study sex education uh, in our world they are able to not send uh, their child their child to these lessons but in the world of proposition parents can do anything and most of uh, these parents will send their children to religious school or they will stay on home education why because uh, first of all uh, every parent don't want so bad affection on their ch on their children and for religious people uh, for example uh, sex education is bad affection and that is why they will send them to religious school and something like this and uh, why is this bad firstly because uh, children will get worse education because in religious school children study science uh, not as well as in regular school because most of times they study some religious things or and they don't study some significant things such as uh, the theory of evolution uh, for example or uh, they study on the basics of math because religious teachers mostly phrased or mufti and uh, not math teacher uh, they can't uh, give to the to children good knowledge in many approaches it means that uh, for these children it will be harder to pass SAT for example or other exams uh, and enter university and get good education and uh, find a good job also it means that people from minorities will stay uh, unrepresented and they will be isolated from society and it causes more stigmatizations and stereotypizations for them especially if not that minority is more likely migrants and majority will think that people from minority are uh, worse than majority because they even can't get a good education uh, and they have to work on all paid jobs and maybe because they don't have enough money they have to do some criminals and uh, people from uh, majority will be or people from minority will be more stigmatization uh, espli og um due to the fact that teachers and parents interacting looks less like uh, changes to the curriculum because that's set by the government and more like parents pulling children from specific lessons such as sex education and history and english um do you think that this is a bad thing uh yes uh okay uh okay I, we will answer uh, then so uh, but uh what changed in our world in our world uh even if children from minority don't get sex education for example uh they will still uh, at least uh at least get better education and uh with more probabilities they will pass sat successful and will able to go to university but they also uh won't find a good job and something like this and also they will interact with majority and students uh students mind uh in students mind stigmas and stereotypes will broke because majority students now will see that uh people from minority uh also good and they are the same but we also think that it is important to parents to interact with teachers because uh, because only this way uh, 
they can no problems of their children because many children uh, hide their school problems uh, they hide from the they from their parents that they are maybe bullied or or something like this and they don't talk with their parents about their problems but teachers in school uh, can see that uh, somebody maybe bull this uh, child and they can uh, to talk about this problem to their parents and uh, my partner will continue this point. Thank you. I thank the member for the first speech and call upon the government trip to summarize the case for a side government. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, so what closing opposition says that minority people will not send their children to the schools who say that the people that they describe are the isolationist people who live in an isolationist community by not having any interaction with the society. We believe that the most of the religious kind of group are not that kind of radical uh, as a closing opposition describes. We believe that they still interact with different kind of liberal progressive people who still uh, uh, who still believe that uh, uh, sexual education is good and so on. And more, more mostly in those Western uh, liberal democracies, they're more um, involved with a different kind of uh, uh, Community, uh, communities with different kind of people who have a, a different kind of background. But they, uh, if, uh, the kind of group that causing opposition uh, describes you are already do not send their children to school because they're afraid that their children have might, uh, might have sex or might commit a sin, might try a drug. That's why they, in status quo, send their children to the churches, mosques, and uh, give education in that kind of religious institutions. Even if they say that some people will not send their school. They do not work on the amount of people or you know, how, how much of those uh, uh, parents will actually will not send their child to school. We believe that the parents have different incentives. They might uh, believe that the uh, school education is the best way to, uh, to have a best future for their, ch for their children. And even if they believe that they will teach sex education and different kind of stuff that contradicts their belief, they will still send their children because they want them to have have better uh, better views uh, and so on. Uh, so we believe that uh, even if that's true, it's only one or two families among of ten of the thousands. We believe uh, uh, what the opening government says. Um, what opening opposition says that checks and balance system will be ruined uh, and uh, teachers will discriminate ch uh, children on a daily basis. Notice that they never explain why parents are the balance in this check and balance system. We say that the parental involvement will still exist on our side, which means that uh, children can still complain to the uh, racial discrimination from their children, to their parents, to the to the other organizations, which means that we can still deal with the, all of the problems that opening uh, uh, opposition described. Even if they say, we, we believe that it's not it's less important because it exists on both of the sides. Opening opposition never explains so how it will be improved. What what exactly will be changed? Two things. Firstly, school curriculum and school activities won't be organized for only family who, who are funding schools, who are donating a lot of money. We believe that in status quo, most of the parents donate a lot of money in order to, gi to give more opportunities to their children. For example, creating more football sections, devoting more time to the kind of sport activities or, uh, um, or uh, uh, other, uh, other things. Uh, notice that this funding are not available for every every uh, parent, which means that, uh, uh, for example, in the one school, uh, if upper mid, uh, if the family from upper middle class uh, can donate a lot of money, pe uh, pe uh, parent from middle lower class cannot uh, give a lot of money, which means that the interest of their children will not be uh, uh, will, uh, will not be. Uh, 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 will, will not be considered in uh, uh, in creating such such kind of activities, which means that the school's function is being operated only for a limited amount of people in opposition side. On our side, uh, we uh, we say that the school activities will not be. Uh, will not be organized only for, for people who donate, but uh, for every person, which means that gives a lot of 
uh, opportunity to different kind of people to try a lot of new uh, new other stuff, which me, uh, which means that we el eliminate the uh, discrimination for the poorer children on opposition side that exists that they eliminate the chance to develop and try new stuff uh, on their side on our side uh, we believe that uh, uh, we, we believe that uh, people will have more uh, chances to uh, try a lot of stuff and uh, school uh, curriculum will not be built only in one way uh, on that opening government says that in status quo uh, 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 what opening government says that now more school students will have more different views and uh, uh, and they'll have clash of ideas however we, we believe that uh, they do not explain you one why on opposition side it's never impossible to achieve that we believe that they still uh, 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 we believe that this uh, we believe that uh, firstly teachers are still interested in having uh, um, uh, in uh, explaining different kind of ideas and promoting tolerance for different kind of ideas for two reasons. Firstly, to create normal working working community for every person, for every student, in order to uh, 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 to to feel uh, comfortable for every student. And secondly, to create comfortable society for the teachers themselves to provide with effective education system. And we believe that this uh, those uh, function to create more tolerant idea to different kind of views still exist and teachers are themselves intent incentivized because if you uh if you're trying to teach kind uh, the different kind of subjects to the class that argues with themselves because of the different kind of ideas you will not have much more effective uh, uh um you you won't work uh, uh um you don't have you will not work any as as effective as you can uh moreover uh, students themselves uh, uh, ha will have a new friendship and acquaintance with different kind of people. Uh, mo mo notice that most of the Western liberal democracies have multi uh, 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 multi ethnic groups, uh, different, uh, sorry, opening opposition, uh, 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 people from different kind of backgrounds, which means that they still can learn the tolerance, the liberal views in our, in uh, both, both sides of the house, no matter of the model system. But what exactly will be changed? We say that the pa parental involvement is not available to every person, which means that working class or minority groups mostly. Uh, mostly overworked to survive and provide with necessities for their family that's to say they might those kind of parents might push their children to work from early times so or push them to pay less attention for the uh, for the education because they might not succeed because of the different biases the different barriers that uh, those kind of minorities have how it affects to the teachers we believe that teachers will pay less attention to those kind of groups but what will be changed we say my, my partner explains how this empowers teachers to have more responsibility we believe because it, once you minimize or eliminate the involvement of the parent you realize that the, you will be responsible for the education and for the uh, um, academic performance of these children which means that you identify what these children has to do or uh, should have to do which means that you will pay more attention opening opposition says that there is less uh, they pay less there is not enough teachers we believe that under those kind of situation we believe that the teachers will be less and which me which means that schools will, will try to provide more teachers uh, uh, cover cover more uh, uh, cover the schools with more teachers and mo more kind of stuff uh, proud to propose yeah i thank the government with first speech and call upon the opposition to conclude this round one as all here So I'm starting. So uh, the main criteria in this round is uh, uh, the kids. They're um, oh, okay. It's the kids. How they will survive in the school? How they will uh, face many problems? And why the teachers' involvement uh, will be better or worse uh, rather than um, rather than involvement of the parents? So. Uh, First of all, I'm going to talk about the opening tables, then I'm going to rebuttal the CG, and then we're going to um, analyze the whole game. So when we're talking about the opening tables, they provide us a lot of arguments, but what we actually find is that they were uh, mostly debating about why teachers actually will do some harm or some good for the kids. They mostly talked about why teachers will do it for the money or not for the money, but it's not the main problem of this game because um, 
we needed to understand like uh, as from our uh, as from our table, as from our team, as we said that um, how much how many attention will be good for the kids. Why it's so important to uh, consider attention of the one teacher to the dozens of children and how it will influence this, uh, the children. It's not about the money or something else. If we will presume that uh, if we will presume that they will have like uh, some amount of some good amount of the money, uh, yeah. Moreover, what we also talked on our side is that um, uh, in this, uh, so it is the, it was the first point of the opening tables. Going to the uh, uh, going to the our team, we still do not understand why it's so. Um, uh, we still do not understand why programs that are sponsored by the privileged group, like a middle class group, the teachers will still uh, individually um, have much more time to the middle class, as CG says about it. Uh, says about it. They still says that they will provide only specific um, specific uh, classes for these children. They will still uh, uh, okay. The next. Um, they will. They still will uh, open specific classes like sex education, like other uh, stuff. Yeah. Also, the point of rebuttal for the CJ. What we have is that they are talking that uh, minorities groups that are privileged to the specific uh, that will have only this specific um, region. They will not go. Uh, they will not let their children to study in different schools, uh, in in public schools, but. As they do not have uh, a lot of money, they will actually send their children because they are obliged to do it. But uh, as they know that the school will uh, provide their uh, education about uh, sex, about drugs, about violence, they will uh, try anything to uh, they will try anything to let their children's uh, home uh, home study, homeschooling, because. As they know, it will ruin their beliefs. It will ruin their uh, values of their family. And for the uh, minorities, it is one of the uh, one of the most important things, uh, especially when they are face um, discrimination or any kind of uh, or any kind of uh, interaction. For example. Uh, Teacher will, for example, teacher will talk about the how to not discriminate other people, how it's good to be toler uh, tolerant to the uh, to the other people and to other problems. But actually, they will only talk about this stuff. They will not uh, have a lot of time to uh, to talk with specific one children who has this kind of problems because the the teacher has a lot of children, but. Uh, Ha but parents have only one to four to or one to four and for parents it will be much easier to uh, understand the problems of the children rather than teacher who is um, who is uh, came from the privile privileged or from the uh, not minorities but the biggest uh, part of the society so this is uh, okay OG okay why would children specifically from minorities be locked out of schools especially as on our side prevent uh, we prevent parents from actually interfering with who actually attends the schools. Okay, uh, why it is this, okay? Uh, what we see from the uh, from this uh, case is that teachers, even though they will, uh, as we block any kind of teachers interaction with the parents, we block a lot of things that are happening in the school uh, that parents will not understand the problems, parents will not see uh, how they can influence uh, the grow the grow of their children. And as uh, it is happening, uh, as it is happening, we understand that this is, um, uh, we understand that it is going to, uh, but the parents will actually um, see like the curriculum, they will actually understand the uh, lessons that they are that are taught in the school. So this is why, as they have no influence on the school, they will keep them home home studying because uh, it is uh, um, it is better for the for their values. So 
in this case, uh, when we still have the influence, when parents still have influence, they will still feel that this school can be good for their children. They still feel that um, that education that are provided in the public school can be specified to their own children. This is why they're going to uh, let their children to study with the other uh, with other um, middle class children, as they know that it will lead to their better uh, education in university, as the passing the SAT examinations and etc. So this is why we need to uh, still do not uh, implement the teacher independence model because this is. Um, because in this uh, specific, no, thank you. In this specific time, when uh, we, when the main uh, game in this, uh, the main problem in this game was the minorities and children from minorities, uh, we understand that uh, that my, uh, minorities families will feel much better and much protected, especially for their ki ki uh, children and for their values, as the parents' influence will be uh, in this uh, in this game. So I have uh, the the last 15 seconds. So uh, this is the this is why we are winning the game because only we provide. Why actually parents will. Um, feel satisfied as they will not have the teacher's individual uh, model. Thank you. I thank uh, everyone for the debate uh, and the opposition with private speech. Uh, we will now leave to adjudicate and return to you with call and, and feedback uh, in a bit. Bye bye everyone. Let's go to the breakout room, right? All right, thank you.